Hello, everybody. And I'd like to share something with you tonight. As of today, I have a new favorite shirt. Just be. Our friend uh, Shakti dropped that off. So thank you. I love it. And now that that's over with, um, we're going to look at a Clyde Aspaveg tonight. Uh, just a gorgeous, gorgeous painting. So um, we're going to keep this front end short and sweet, as I am known as Jason Unceremonious Meyer. So we'll stay true to that. And let's just get this show on the road. Okay, so as you can see atop of my head, tonight we're gonna look at Clyde Aspavig. He's a living American landscape painter. And the piece we're gonna look at, we're gonna spend the entire tonight, tonight on a single piece. Um, it's called Lightning Dance. And it's a large piece, 60 inches by 60 inches. So I'm not a math major, but I believe that is five feet by five feet. So, Let's take a look at this thing. And like always, take a minute or so just to look at it before we talk about it. How does this painting strike you? But up, bum, bum. Right? I, this painting is just, to me, so gorgeous in so many ways. I was lucky enough to see it in person um, in Santa Barbara. Oh, I hate to say how many years ago now. I don't even know. Um, he had an exhibition, uh, exhibition of his work at, the, I believe it was the Natural History Museum of all places. It was gorgeous. They had the lights turned down and low and the paintings lit just beautifully. And although this looks super, super tight, his paintings have paint quality where the paint is really built up. And um, it's just another world on the surface there. And then you stand back and it just pulls into these wonderful landscape, often of these seemingly empty places. Right? Uh, Clyde Aspavig is one of these guys that always seems to have plenty of atmosphere and space in his paintings. And he's a master at arranging those spaces and those little notes. So now you had a minute to look at it. Let's start kind of going through this thing and uh, take a more critical eye. And just, it's, is this guy really a genius? Well, if you're asking me, the answer is yes. Look, I mean, that thing was beautiful, had those beautiful colors in there. And that was probably the first thing you noticed. You know, I, I'm living in uh, central coast of California and we don't have those kinds of skies here. But if you've ever seen these storms and these lightning storms and that nature of the light in the sky. But not only that, earlier today in class, we were talking about the idea of luminosity. Right? Because that lightning is, is one thing and it's powerful, but it's a small part. It's a small part of the painting. It's got to be supported by this land mass in the foreground. Right? And then where that lightning takes place, look how that cloud's behind that's just almost a gray wall. And 
and then above the lightning strike. The clouds floating in air. And look at those value shapes. Right? But that glow is a value thing. Well, it's a value and temperature thing, but it's a value thing first. Would this painting work if we covered up that little bit of sky that's showing through on that bottom left? It wouldn't work at all. It wouldn't work at all. And these tree masses in the foreground, they're just so wonderfully placed and spaced. And I mean, it makes me almost want to cry, to be honest with you. They're just so, so beautiful. But now that we've had a moment, okay, let us think, what's the simplest way to divide this canvas? Well, between the land and the sky. So that's the sky. And again, when you take the land mass out and after you get over almost the shock of that lightning, literally, and you look at the sky behind the lightning and that kind of band, it's got some color, but you see it's a rather flat and then once you get to the top of the lightning, above the lightning, the clouds get interesting. By doing that, do you see how that intensifies the effect of the lightning? Where that lightning was happening, if he had all these beautiful, gorgeous, floating clouds like this, like he has above, that lightning, the intensity of that would just lessen. So beautiful. And the way that light spills out of the top of that, oh man, I can't even tell you. I can't even tell you. So beautiful. I hope I don't have to tell you. And again, it's about values, guys, about shapes, about letting go and grabbing on something and the nothing. Right? And I hope you noticed, besides those beautiful clouds we've talking about, did you look at the lightning? Is it even all the way through? N no, I had my nose in here. It comes and goes and it's built up. And I know kind of from a distance, it looks like it's almost a white stripe down there. But no, that thing glows and emanates. And then look towards the top of the cloud, how it dissipates that bolts are gone and you just have this area, this aura of light. And so that bolt of lightning literally emerges out of the light and concentrates and finds its way like electricity down to the ground. And I can see that faint hint of that second one back there it just wasn't strong enough or either ending or just starting. Right? Do you see that? Just to the just to the right there. And what about the other part of the painting? Just that landmass. Look, even without the sky, do you feel how he's made those colors go from near to far? Is there basically three big divisions? Right, this first field until we get to the turn under. Maybe there's a creek down there. And then that second, which goes until the hills. And compare the size of this first field to the size of the second field. Compare the colors and the color differences, the shapes and the shape differences. Right? 
Okay, it's master. And again, if you've got your nose in that foreground there, man, it almost looks like an industrial accident. I mean, really thick chunks of paint coming and going, melding in and out. And it's, it's like the most harmonious industrial accident you've ever seen. It's just absolutely gorgeous. If you ever have a chance to see an Aspavig in person, take it. Take it, take it, take it. Again, in black and white, where are we really focusing here? Notice how we're focusing on the bottom left. Do you remember where the lightning is? Right? It's more towards the top right. So we always talk about creating this kind of diagonal action. When we go back to the full canvas, notice that even though that lightning's really strong, there's still a strongest point on the land. And it acts as kind of a counterpoint to that lightning. Can you notice that now? Right, he's aesthetically balanced that dark single, quote unquote, tree, shrub in the bottom left with the lightning. I, I really hope that you guys are receiving the, the good feels from this one because if you let yourself marinate in things that are aesthetically balanced, masterworks, and what I mean by that, sometimes I get funny looks, it's just masterful works, right? And um, they have that quality. And to a layman, it might like look, well, what's the big deal with this? I could do that, right? But with somebody with experience, they recognize the placement of the weights, the, the delicacy of the weights, of the edges, the balance of the nothingness of the background behind the lightning to the somethingness of the lightning. Right, there's so much that goes into these masterworks. And that's the reason that I like to spend every day really looking and studying these things and almost just kind of cooking in them. So we're going to bring this to an end. Just enjoying the full picture for a minute. Again, as artists, it's good to get in here and, and see and understand what's happening so that we can learn when you set things like this, this these are the effects you can get or what's possible, right? But in the end, it's all about just the pure visual enjoyment of it. And I think that comes through in so many ways here. From the subject matter to the colors, again, to the simple aesthetic balance of it all. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me this week. Let me remind you that uh, the month of December, Monday through Friday here on YouTube, we'll be going live three times a day, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time with some feedback for students, a morning jump start, so to speak, in the afternoons at 1.30. I'll be standing right behind me with some better light on everything and I'll be working on my own work and talking to you about what I'm doing. 
And then the evenings at 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, we'll look at a masterwork. So if you haven't, I hope you'll hit the little red button at the bottom. Hit that button with your clicker and see what happens. That'll help you subscribe to our channel. And uh, if this looks like something you want to do some more, we've got a brand new class starting Monday morning. So uh, reach out. And this is a special class because December is going to be about your personal paintings rather than assignments. And we're going to work all, all month uh, with your own work. So if you like those morning jump starts or any of this, um, I hope you'll consider taking the classes. Uh, until we are back Sunday night on Facebook for Sketch Club, 6.55, uh, Meyer Studio there. And then Monday morning, we'll be back here at 8 a.m. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you guys then. Bye-bye.